everyone, and welcome to today's edition of HCAM Sports Talk. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy here, and on today's show in just a bit, we'll have Jared Keen and Andy Barron joining us to make our weekly NFL picks and to talk about some of the other local sports happenings. But first, here is a look at the latest Hopkinton Hillers fall sports highlights. In the final week of the regular season, Hiller Girls Soccer took on Ashland on Monday, October 25th. Hillers netted a goal in the first half. And Marchetti sends it back to the keeper. And now it's taken by DuPont. Shot! And go, Hillers! Joanna DuPont with a steal. Puts it in. In the second half, Hillers strike multiple times. Up to Butler. Burt Whistle skates it through. Looking for DuPont. Here goes DuPont towards the net. Shot! Goal! Hillers! DuPont on the goal, Burt Whistle on the assist, and the Hillers lead it two to nothing. Nearly dropped. Imagine uh, the ball is a bit slick with the weather we've had throughout the whole afternoon. Recupero. Nina takes a shot, and it's in! Nina Zaganatis puts it in to make it a three nothing Hillers lead. Burt Whistle sneaking through. Burt Whistle sends it over. Butler with a long shot, and it's in! Wow, long distance goes Ashley Butler. Hopkinton takes the game over Ashland, four to nothing. Next stop is the playoffs. Also on Monday, October 25th, Hiller Girls Volleyball hosted Lincoln Sudbury, Steve Sweetapple and Matt Clancy on the call. Sam, Catherine, back to Gilday. Oh. Oh, and that's it. Lincoln Sudbury takes the first set, 31-29. Oh, what a, what, what a, a serve. Unbelievable way to close out the set. Hopkinton takes the second set, 25 to 15. Wow. That was an improvement, Matt. That was a, un, just an amazing, amazing set. I mean, it was so great to see them come together as a group and play as a team. Still set point for their match point for the Hillers. Meg with a bump. Catherine, Gilday. And that's it. There you go. Hopkinton takes the fourth set, 25-17 for a 3-1 win. Hopkinton took the win 3-1 and improved to 19-0. On Wednesday, October 27th, Hiller Girls Volleyball finished out the regular season hosting Westwood. Steve Sweetapple and Matt Clancy on the call. Gonna be a free ball. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sam gets it. Catherine KP got it. Got it. That's out. So Hopkinson takes the first set, 25 to 22. Lou handles that. Going to McKim. Sam well, armbar. Abby. KP puts it to the back line. They go outside to Lou, and she sails that long. And they wanted a tip, but they didn't get it. Hopkinton yeah. takes that second set, 25-15. Oh, it's gonna oh, go. What a yes! Play. <laughs> what a Mel doesn't play. even believe that, and that's it. Hopkinton takes the third set, 25-15 for a 3-0 sweep. Wow, and, CBL champs. Yeah, what a way to end it. Mel, <laughs> Mel was in disbelief <laughs> that that went over. Hopkinton takes the win via a 3-0 sweep and finishes a perfect 20-0 on the season. 
the Hillers racked up their 17th sweep of the season. Next up is the postseason. Hillers field hockey wrapped up the season with a 3-1 win on the road versus Medfield. They pick up their second win to close out their season. On Friday, October 29th, Hiller Boys Soccer battled Westwood to wrap up the regular season. Hillers netted a goal in the first half. Looking for Golombuski, driving in. Off of Golombuski, a live ball, shot, score, Hillers! Sean Golombuski makes it one to nothing at 27.48 left to go in the first half. Hopkinton nets two more in the second half. Send in the Ito from Schnorr. Back to Schnorr. In front of the net. And it is put in. And that was Shaw, Ryan Shaw with the goal. Into Schnorr, lifts it. Far side, Dima Kelly. Kelly matched up with Roberts. Works his way in, out in front. Schnorr, shot, goal! And the Hillers lead it three to nothing. What a great setup by Dima Kelly as Schnorr pops it in. Hillers take the win three to one and close out the regular season in style with a 13-4 and one record. On Friday, October 29th, Hiller Boys Soccer had their regular season finale against Westwood. The Hillers would draw first blood in the first half. Ito. Looking for Golombuski, driving in. Off of Golombuski, a live ball, shot, score, Hillers! Sean Golombuski makes it one to nothing. At 27.48 left to go in the first half. In the second half, the Hillers added more. It's gonna be a corner for the Hillers. Zito will take it. Or will it? Send in the Ito from Schnorr. Back to Schnorr. In front of the net. And it is put in. And that was Shaw, Ryan Shaw with the goal. Gilly matched up with Roberts. Works his way in, out in front. Shaw, shot, goal! And the Hillers lead it three to nothing. What a great setup by Dima Kelly. As Schnorr pops it in. Hopkinton took the three to one victory over Westwood and finished regular season play at 13 wins, four losses, and a tie. On Thursday, November 4th, 13th seeded Hopkinton took on 19th seeded Neshoba. Neshoba struck first. Into the box, shot, it's in! Jack Slade with the first score for Neshoba. Later in the first half, the Hillers responded. Peter Kelly into the box. And a header and in by Vassington. Well, what do you know? Neshoba scored off a header earlier and now the Hillers respond. Just over 15 minutes left in regulation and this happens. There's it out. Brown. Over to Palmacchio. Golombuski sneaks through. Sends it out. Shot. Go, Hillers! Owen Schnorr puts it in. And the Hillers take the lead. Hillers struck again and captured the 2-1 win. And they move on to face Holliston in the final 16. On Friday, November 5th, undefeated third-seeded Hillers met up with 30th-seeded Danvers, Steve Sweetapple, and Matt Clancy on the call. That's not the first time Allen's been hit. <laughs> Won't be the last. 
And that's oh. long. Side out, Hopkinton takes the first set, 25 to 14. Still set point. A floater, Sam gets to it. Catherine, KP, that's it. <laughs> Hopkinton takes the second set, 25 to 14 for a two sets to none lead. Great winner. 24 to 11, match point. Furlong back in. Simpson serving. And she serves it long, that's it. Hopkinton takes the third set, 25 to 11 for a 3-0 sweep of the Falcons. The Hillers took the game via sweep and advance on to the final 16 with the win. Hillers football hosted Newton North in week nine non-playoff action. The Hillers fell 26 to 14 in the game. Hopkinton now stands at three and six overall. On Saturday, November 6th, Hillers girls soccer fell 2 to nothing on the road to Brookline in tournament play. The girls end their season at 10 wins and 9 losses. Congratulations to the team on a great season. The Hillers have announced Nick Grout is the new Dover Sherborne Hopkinton Co-op girls hockey coach. Nick is a teacher at Dover Sherborne High School and previously coached the team for nine years. Welcome to Dover Sherborne Hopkinton Co-op, Nick Grout. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of HCAM Sports Talk. I'm Tom Nappy, and joining me on today's show, we have Andy Barron from MyFM 101.3, and we have Jared King from the Metro West Daily News. Guys, how are you? Good, Tom. How are you, Jared? It was nice working with you uh, last Friday night in Medway. Absolutely. Doing well. Um, yeah, no, it was awesome to be out there last week, definitely. Uh How'd that game go, Bellingham Medway? I know Medway won, uh, but I understand it was a pretty good game. It was in the first half. Uh, after uh, the the sixty five yard touchdown pass, there it was getting interesting, thirteen thirteen. But all Medway uh, in the second half, it was all Matt Childs. He was just unstoppable. And I believe Jared, you told me that uh, Medway, I believe, scored in every single uh, possession they had. In the, in the in the second half, yeah. yeah, they came out on fire in the second half. They just took it to him. They just wore him down. Childs was immense. Absolutely, uh, Medway. They are a good team. They got a lot of returning players. And Andy, I changed your name from Maureen, so everyone knows who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I yeah, I'm on my wife's computer tonight. I'm in a different room, but uh, okay. Hey, Here we nice. go. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> So what do you guys think of the uh, state format? I know there's uh, a lot of positives, a lot of negatives. I think it was Norton had to travel somewhere ridiculous, like Pittsfield or something like that, which is like 140 miles away or something. Uh, so there was some crazy uh, travels for some of these teams. But I have to say, I mean, I like the state format because it it's more even, you know, getting those sectionals where you have seven games in one or two or three in the other, but some of the travel, Oh boy. I mean, maybe some of these games need a middle ground somewhere. 
I'm I'm again I'm kind of in the middle. I I mean I I, I like it, but there's also some negatives to it. Um, you know, again, i.e. the travel. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but I know uh, I'd seen that one of the first round volleyball matchups was Monument Mountain from out west having to go to Nantucket for a first round volleyball matchup. That's just insane. Yeah, that's like eight hours of travel round trip. That's just ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that and that and that, Jared. That's a good point, Tom. You make a good point too. That's the issue there. And another issue, I still think there's just too many teams. In my opinion, I, I think they got to scale back a little bit here and, and maybe you avoid some of those long games. But especially if you have a, a team from the Berkshires and you're playing like Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket, you have to get over there by a ferry. You've got to meet somewhere in the middle. I, that's where it needs to be tweaked. Listen, I don't have an issue with it. I know a lot of people don't like this, but I think it makes it interesting because you get to see some of these other teams from the state and be like, hey, you know, if you want – you eliminate the sectionals, and now you're playing. Like for example, you you're still seeing some divisional matchups. Holston and Hopkinton play tomorrow, I believe, in soccer. Right. So I we'll mean, you're still, <laughs> yeah, BVT's playing uh, Nipmuc and volleyball. Listen, some of these rivalries are still happening, which is good. I Uxbridge and Northridge, I believe, played today too. So I, I'm kind of for it. I I I just think there's too many teams though. 43 teams in a division, that's just ridiculous. You've got to scale this back a little bit. Well, and pretty much everything besides football, they're doing all teams above 500, which they've traditionally done. Uh, But, you know, is there a better system? Could you have, you know, kind of like the college basketball bracket in East, Central, West? And, yeah, that's kind of like the sectionals, but maybe you even it out every year. So every team's playing the same amount of games still, or you have, you know, those playing games um, to get into like, you know, the 16 in that section or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I definitely agree that, you know, maybe they have to up the standards a little bit to the teams that get in and cut it down. I like what they're doing with football. It's 16 teams and that's it with these other sports. It's everyone above 500 is in the tournament, which some years going to be more teams than others. Uh, so, and that's, our, it's, I think mostly those other sports that you're seeing the big travel issues in football had a few of them that were really far, but yeah, I mean, I, it's a system that needs a little work, but I do like it. I think it's more fair overall than the sectionals, but the travel obviously for some teams is very unfortunate. I think, the, I think it's the right system for the most part. Again, I just think, like you said, Tom, it needs tweaking. I think it needs a little bit of tweaking, and I think once it gets tweaked a little bit, it'll be it'll be good. Um, again, obviously, this is the first year of it, so that's going to happen. But, um, you know, um, I, I think for the most part, it's the right system. It just needs a little bit of tweaking. Like anything else, yeah, and I agree. And I think you're going to see this week, some really, really good matchups in football. You got some really good games. I think Natick and Milford is going to be really good. And I think Methuen at Franklin, that is a good football team. I think you're going to see another good game there. I mean, I like Franklin in that game. Some of these games are not going to be layups. I mean, there are some, you got a lot more evenly matched games, I believe, going into the round of eight. Absolutely. I mean, definitely can't take Methuen lightly, especially after no. Methuen beat Everett. You know, if you beat Everett, that's, hmm. I mean, that's legit. And, so. and we have a special guest. Steve Watson's here, everybody. Steve, hey, Steve. what's going on? Steve. Uh, look at that. Steve Watson joining the show. He had a good week last week in picks. Well, he went seven and six. But uh, than me. mediocre, we'll call it. Hey, you're only five games back. You're right in the hunt. So well, hey, you know, who last place in an ice cold night on the roof of your building. So sounds fun. All right. Well, we're glad that you're on uh, today to make some picks with us. Hopefully, your internet will work okay. And Tom, if you Tom, I don't know if you saw, but Milford Natick is now Thursday at six p.m. I did. Friday. Okay. There's I will a be lot there. of games. By the way, folks, if you're looking for a Friday night football game, uh, be sure to pay attention to Twitter. A lot of those games are getting moved. A lot of rain and bad weather coming in on Friday. So. I know there's already been a couple games moved to Saturday. 
Uh, I forget what one's off the top of my head, but there's already been some TVL games moved to Saturday. Uh, there's some being moved to Thursday. So keep an eye on your school's athletic Twitter account. They'll keep you informed of all the changes. And I'll be in, I'll be in Milford on Thursday for that Milford Natick game, which should be another doozy. Uh, I was talking to Andy before we, before you jumped on Tom. I mean, that first meeting was phenomenal. Um, so yeah, I'll be there Thursday and, uh, hoping for another good one. Yeah. I, I think, uh, Natick is a really good football team and I think they've gotten better. And this Milford offense has been a little stagnant these last few yep. games. I mean, I know they won 24, nothing over Hingham, but not a very good second half for Milford. I think they kind of just coasted a little bit, but this Natick team is much better. I, I do think Milford has the advantage, but I am expecting it's going to be a packed house there on Thursday night. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. And Natick being so close. And the first time they met it was what, 17 to 16 or something like that? 28, uh, 27. 28, 27. Oh, okay. Yeah. And but, uh, the game was decided. Natick went, Natick went for two on the last play of the game and didn't get it. And Milford hung on to win. There you go. You took the words right out of Steve's mouth. Yeah. It, it, honestly, in, in the 10 years that I've been doing Milford games, hands down, the best game that I've seen there. Hands down. That was a phenomenal game. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that on Thursday. It should be awesome. Yeah. It's kind of funny how the first time they met, the game got moved to a Thursday, and now the second time they meet, it's getting moved to a Thursday. I know. Yeah. That is some serious iron. Lightning strikes twice, apparently. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, for all you uh, Hopkinton Hillers fans and Holliston Panthers fans, HCAM and HCAT are teaming up to bring you the game. Uh, that'll take place... Today, if you're watching this show live, Wednesday, 4 p.m., it'll be live on HCAT and their YouTube page and also live on our HCAM Ed channel. We'll share the link out there where you can catch the game live as Hopkins Taylor's boys soccer looks to advance. Uh, they'll have to take down a tough Holliston team if they want to do so. But I'll tell you what, the only two blemishes on the Holliston record is a tie against Hopkinton and a loss against Hopkinton. So I give the Hillers a good chance in this game. Hillers Holliston live on HCAT and HCAM. Yours truly on the call. I'm excited about it. Got to love an HCAM, HCAT, uh, you know. Uh, Extravaganza. <laughs> yeah, I, I know some of the guys over at HCAT. I've done a lot of Holliston football over the years, and uh, I really like a lot of the guys over at HCAT as well, so. Um, yeah. you know, Tom Emmons does a great job. Uh, Carlos Canto does a great job. Love those guys. Yeah, they do a great job over there. Great football production. Uh, so anyways, we got our, uh, football picks, but let's start off talking some Patriots. They took down the Carolina Panthers last week. I think it was a win that we all expected them to get everyone across the board, picked the Pats and that's a win they should have got. And they got it pretty dominantly. Mac Jones didn't look great at all times. The offense didn't look great at all times. The defense played well. Uh, I think it was a good win. Go on the road, face a feisty Carolina team. They shut down McCaffrey. Good win by the Pats over in Carolina. What are your guys' thoughts? Physicality. This Patriots team was physical. I have not seen this in a long time. I mean, that hit that DJ Moore took from Bryant, that got me out of my seat. I'm like, whoa, like that was something I was not expecting. Another good game for J.C. Jackson and Adrian Phillips. Um, I also think the emergence of Christian Barmore, he has really looked good. We know how good Matt Judon is, but now we're seeing somebody else emerging from this defense. That's a really good sign. The Patriots dominated this game from start to finish. Um, yeah, the offense didn't, wasn't great, but they were good enough. And here's the thing I liked about Mac Jones. He learns from his mistakes. He threw the interception. It was a bad throw. He comes back, takes him down the field, scores on the Hunter Henry touchdown. That was the difference in the game. And Carolina really just had no chance. Sam Donald was awful in this game. And, and the Patriots defense made him do that. You win two games on the road now. This team is 4-0 and on the road, which is unbelievable, really, considering how bad they've played at the start of the season. They've been great on the road. And uh, I'm expecting another – Good, th great things coming against Cleveland on Sunday, and uh, some breaking news: four Browns players just tested positive for COVID today. Oh one boy! Nick Chubb was one of them. Oh boy! Here we go! Here we go! Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think everyone's going to pick the Pats across the board this week. 
but Sam Darnold was seeing ghosts out there. That's all I, I thought it was a good win. Andy took the words out of my mouth. I thought uh, this team was physical um, and the defense really stepped up. Um, obviously, the pick six really helped. Um, yes. You know, uh, again, the offense didn't look great, but it didn't really need to. Um, you know, Mac sort of managed the game, wasn't phenomenal by any means, um, but did what he had to do to help his team win the game. Um, and again, the defense stepped up, played, uh, you know, played really well. And, uh, you know, that was, it was good to go in there and take care of business. Steve, what'd you think? I thought it was a good team win. It certainly wasn't the prettiest, you know, the offense struggled at times to start the game, but, you know, good team win top to bottom. You know, they're not shooting themselves in the foot um, as often, at least, as they were to start the year. And the, the Panthers are a decent team. You know, they're 4-4. Four and four, They're in the playoff mix. And they traveled all the way out to Los Angeles week before. Then you come home traveling down to Carolina right after that. So they've walked a lot of miles, and they just keep getting better each week. A good win. Big matchup on Sunday with Cleveland. Yes. And, uh, well, who knows who's going to be playing for Cleveland at this point. But – uh, it should be uh, an interesting match if everyone. Uh, I think regardless, I mean, I've heard Nick Schaub is supposed to be out, but even if even if he's out, that it's still going to be a tough matchup. Just because one guy's out it doesn't make it a, a, a gimme. You saw all the upsets this past week. Oh yeah, Cleveland dominated Cincinnati last week. I think yeah. they're a good team. Yeah. Solid defense in Cleveland. Uh, I think it's going to be one of those grinded out kind of games. Uh, yeah, I, I, I could see that too. Yeah, I, I can see it too, Steve. I think this could be a 2016 game. I just think it's going to be one of those type of games. This Browns team is good. They're better than Carolina. I think we can all agree with that. But one thing that, that's coming into my mind, they're going to they're gonna make Baker Mayfield try to beat him. I'm still not sold on this guy. I think he's got a big mouth. I think he he talks a big game. He doesn't back it up. I just It's typical Browns. I like the Patriots. I, I just think they're rolling three in a row. The tides are turning now. I'm, I'm starting to see it. I'm not saying this team's going to win a Super Bowl or anything, but I like what I'm seeing. They're getting better. Are they still they got are. some work to do. Sure, but they, they got work to do. But you, you've got to be encouraged. Oh. Yeah, I am. Absolutely. Uh, they're heading in the right direction. I don't think there's any doubt about that. All right. Well, I think we're ready to get to some – NFL picks week 10. Can you believe it? Season's just flying by already. Well, I have some unfortunate news. Jared and I are now tied for the lead. 88 wins, 47 losses. We are tied for first. Wow. It is going to be That's right. crazy. That's right. uh, <laughs> Steve is in third at 83 and 52. He's right in the mix. You got Mike in fourth at 80 and 55. Andy, you're right in there as well. 79 and 56. You're nine games out. And then there's Kevin, who's 22 games out at 66 and 60. Oh, uh, poor Kevin. We got uh. uh. <laughs> Wait, is he above is, is he above 500 now? No, he's three games below 500. <laughs> he, he was one game below 500 before last week. Last week, we all kind of had a bad week, except Andy. He was the grand champion of the week. He went 10 and 3. Oof. And then uh, Jared and Steve went 7 and 6. Me and Kevin went 6 and 7. And Mike had a really bad week going 5 and 8. But boy, were there a lot of upsets last week. So, Andy, going 10 and 3 in a week like last week, I got to give you credit for that one. Yeah, about, about time I had a good week. Jeez, it only took me nine weeks. But yeah, you just need a week with like seven upsets to have a good week. What in the world? I could not believe the Bills lost. I was stunned watching the end of that game. I mean, and that crowd was stunned, a, man. Loud. Not a single person probably wasn't stunned about that. That, was that just crowd was rocking in Jacksonville. I was like, oh my goodness. You know, that kind of brought me back a few years ago when Jacksonville beat them in the in the wild card round. It was like the same thing. It was like a 10 to 3 game. The Bills, for some reason, they that's a weird place to play, too. I don't know what it is, but what a horrible loss for that Bills team, really. Awful. Any given Sunday, Sunday right? right? Yeah. I feel like there's always that weird week in the middle of the season where you get, like, six, seven upsets. And this yep. was definitely it, without a doubt. Right in the middle of the season, too. 
All right, so let's get to it. Week 10, we start off with Thursday night football. Baltimore at Miami. Miami, fresh off a win against a very good Houston team. Just kidding, Houston's not very good. Uh, I'm going to give Baltimore the edge in this one. I don't think Miami's going to win a game probably the rest of the season. Kevin picked Baltimore as well. Andy, who do you pick? Baltimore, I mean, the Dolphins are just atrocious. I mean, really, I'd be shocked if they win this game. Now, Baltimore is clearly the better team. They're going to roll. All right, Jared. Baltimore, enough said. Miami stinks. All right. <laughs> Steve. Ravens. All right, Baltimore across the board. We're waiting on Mike's pick. So uh, we won't know that until after the show. But um, he's probably going to pick Baltimore. Buffalo at the Jets getting into the 1 o'clock Sunday games. I'll tell you what, I was kind of on the fence about this one because the Jets, two straight wins, right? They uh, Actually, they didn't play last week. They had the bye week, I believe. Is anybody taking the Jets here? Is anybody taking the Jets? Oh, they did. They played Thursday. And yeah, they, they lost, lost to the Colts. The Colts. Right. They lost to the Colts Thursday, yeah. But Buffalo just lost to the Jags. So there's a little debate here. And guess what? There are a couple people that took the Jets. We'll get oh, to boy. those in a minute. Kevin was one of them. I disagree with Kevin. I think Buffalo is going to pull this one off. Uh, but it won't surprise me if it's close, to be honest with you. Jared, who do you got? Uh, I'm going Buffalo hammer time here. I mean, Buffalo, uh, again, I mean, if you lose to the Jags, that – is really not ideal, but um, I think this is a situation where Buffalo just comes out and just goes off. Um, I don't expect this to be close. Maybe 35-7. I don't know. Um, you know, are the Jets play, playing a little bit better football? Yeah, but I think the situation where the Bills are going to be pissed, they're going to come out and do some damage. Um, give me Josh Allen, like, four touchdown passes. All right. I like it. Andy, who do you got? Going with the Jets. Oh, I, baby. I, oh, I think baby. Buffalo is in big trouble, guys. They do not look good. I, I think the Jets are going to pull off an upset. I really do. I'm just uh, – I just got that feeling that the Bills are sliding downhill. Wow. Just after one loss? One loss? I don't know. I just The Jets have beaten the Titans and the Bengals. I mean, you got to give them some credit. I mean, I, I, I don't think they're a playoff team, but I just – I don't know, man. I did. How can you? How do you not score a touchdown against the Jaguars? I hear you. I hear you. It's unbelievable, man. I mean, wow. Give me the Jets. <laughs> hey, fair enough, Steve. Who do you got? Bills. I think they'll get back on track. All right, but I agree with Andy. I think they do have some problems. Definitely. They do. They definitely do. You can't score a touchdown against the Jags. You have issues. <laughs> That's awful. All right, Tampa Bay at Washington. Anyone going to dare and take Washington? No. No. Nope. No. Nope. Right. This Tampa rolls. I think so. And they're fresh off a of bye week. So. Yeah, and they're coming off a, a bad loss to the Saints. Yeah, Brady's just going to – I'd be stunned if they lost this game. I agree. All right, this is an interesting matchup. You have Atlanta, who got a nice win against New Orleans last week. And, you know, I thought they were going to blow it like they usually do right at the end, but they didn't. They actually won. It's amazing. And Dallas, who got absolutely annihilated against Denver. I can't explain that one. Could Dallas be falling on their face as they usually do? Very possible. Uh, let's start off with Steve for this one. Atlanta at Denver. Who do you got? Atlanta at Dallas or Atlanta at Denver? Excuse me, Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. I want to go with Dallas. Uh, total no-show last week. D I still don't really get what happened. You know, they pulled all the stops to an FER. They beat the Vikings with like a 10-string quarterback who no one's ever heard of before. And then they lose to Denver. Yeah, weird, but I, I think they'll beat the Falcons. All right. Uh, Kevin agrees Dallas is going to win. I also agree. I think Dallas will come back strong. I think Atlanta will uh, do what they typically do and lose. Jared, who are you going with? I want to take Atlanta here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to play it hopefully safe and take Dallas. Um, I wouldn't actually be surprised if this game is close. Um, but I'm going to go with Dallas here. I think Dallas just has a little bit more talent. I can no, see I Andy's, Andy's going to take the Atlanta here. I can see it. If I Andy's pick, definitely taking Atlanta here. If I didn't pick before you, would you have taken Atlanta? No, I still probably would have taken Dallas. 
<laughs> right, Andy, who do you got? Give me Atlanta. I'm taking the Falcons. They, they, I took them last week, and they, they did well. I think they're actually playing a little bit better, believe it or not. Yeah, they're still the Falcons, but Dallas, I mean, you cannot be encouraged by the way they, they – against again, at home, they were horrible against really – a mediocre Broncos team. This Falcons team's got some some talent on this team. I like the Falcons. I'm taking them. All right. There it is. We got four for Dallas and Andy for Atlanta. New Orleans at Tennessee. This could be the 1 o'clock game of the week. Either that or Cleveland uh, Patriots, obviously. Uh, let's start off with Andy for this one. Tennessee, uh, they're the best team in the AFC right now. I mean, they – to go out into Los Angeles and beat the Rams the way they did without their best player, that was eye-opening. I mean, this is a really good football team right now, and um, I, I like I like Tennessee. I think they're, they're going to win this one. I have to agree. I thought they absolutely dominated the Rams. It was very impressive. I think their defense is playing really very well good. right now. Very good defense. And I think New Orleans is struggling. Uh, they are struggling defensively. I don't trust Jameis Winston, never have. I'm going to go Tennessee here. Kevin also went Tennessee. Uh, Jared, what are you going to do? I would be tempted to take New Orleans if they were fully healthy, but I don't know if I trust Trevor Simeon. Um, I'm going to go Tennessee. A.J. Brown is playing at another level right now. Um, again, everybody knows I love Julio Jones, but A.J. Brown has been a difference maker. That guy's elite. He's an elite wide receiver. That's right. Um, James Winston is out with a torn ACL. My bad on that one. But I don't trust Simeon either. So No. Go. I'm going Tennessee. All right, Steve. I don't know the Titans. That was a very impressive win in Los Angeles without Derrick Henry. You know, I don't know a lot of people thought, oh, they don't have Derrick Henry. They're all done. But, yeah, newsflash. They're still good. And, by the way, if the season ended today, Titans would have the number one seed. Yeah, and that's a tough place to play. Tennessee is a tough place to play. I mean, those fans really get into it down there. They'll get Derrick Henry eventually back. And don't forget, we're playing them in a few weeks. That's going to be a huge test for the Patriots. Huge. Oh, that's going to be a doozy. That's going to be a tough game. It is. Is All that right. on the road? Is that game on the no, road? It's, it's, it's in Foxborough, but uh, Mike Vrabel's a good coach. The guy knows what he's doing. I mean. Because he learned from the best, so that's why. Yeah. He's good. Well, I mean – Coaches that have left the Patriots and gone to other teams haven't really had much luck. Oh, well, he's done well so far. He's done well so far. But he yeah. has. But he, he didn't coach here. He was just a player. Yeah. All right. So uh, Jacksonville at Indy. I don't trust Jacksonville, even though they beat Buffalo. I think they fall on their face again. I don't think it's the beginning of anything great. All they had to do was score a touchdown to beat Buffalo, which is just obscene. Uh, I'm going to go Indy here. Kevin also went Indy. Steve, who are you going with? Colts. Fair enough. All right. Jared. Oh, man, I want to take Jacksonville so bad here. Uh, just because the Colts have been so up and down this year. I think this is a game that Jacksonville could win. Uh, I'm going to let you think about it. Andy. No, no, I'm, I'm going Colts. I'm going Colts. I think the Colts just have probably a little bit too much talent in the end, but this is dicey. I was really hoping you'd go Jacksonville. Andy, <laughs> who are you going with? I'm going with the Colts. I, I think Jacksonville, you know, going on the road this week, I mean, after a huge win last week, Colts could, the Colts got a pretty good, decent offense. I just think they're going to be too much. And uh, I think Michael Pittman is a really good wide receiver. That guy he really is talented. Is. He, is he really is. Yeah. Can play. Yes, he is. All right. Detroit at Pittsburgh. Is anyone going to dare and take Detroit? No. Steve wants to so bad. I took Detroit this past week and got absolutely burned. You know, with the Eagles just absolutely housing yeah. them. So there's no way I'm taking I, Detroit now. I, um, I took Detroit in that one because, you know, they've, they've played hard. They've come close a few times, and then they just – Laid an egg, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm not gonna go to Detroit, especially on the road in Pittsburgh. Yeah, no way. All right. Andy convinced me. Andy Andy convinced me to take Detroit last week, and I'm never doing <laughs> that again. Oh, that was that was bad. Yeah, no Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh all around. Andy, yeah. can you please convince him? The real question Detroit? is, will the Lions win a game this year? I don't know, Steve. It's it's not looking good. I mean, no, it's not. No. Yeah. They, they, how they, how is it possible that they could actually? 
for the second time not win a game during the season. It just seems unfathomable to me. Actually, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let them win. I'll, I think they'll win a game. I don't think it'll be this okay. week, but I think they'll Thanksgiving. win Thanksgiving. Maybe they'll win on Thanksgiving against the Bears. Yeah. There you go. The Bears. That might, be their, best, that that might be their best chance. That is very possible. Because the Bears are awful. The team is garbage. Hey, they didn't play that bad last night or against Pittsburgh on Monday Night Football. Well, had had Cassius Marsh not had that taunting. Oh, gosh. That was a I hope he's all out there at least. I didn't like that. Oh, come on. And then the hip check by the ref? Give me a break. Call was legit. He didn't do it intentionally. But all he did was look at the sideline. And the guy was pulling out the flag before he even ran into him. It's still taunting. Oh, come on. It's just a look. All right. Cleveland at New England. We'll just get that over with right now. Kevin went New England. I'm going New England. Steve, who are you going with? Pats. All right. Andy. Taking the Pats. I'm sticking by them until uh, further notice. All right, Jared. If Cleveland didn't have COVID issues right now, I would take Cleveland. But I'm going this team. All right, there we go. Pats across the board. Getting into the four o'clock games, Minnesota at the Chargers. Minnesota, they have been one of those weird teams that they look great in a lot of first halves and then choke in the second half. They almost beat Baltimore last week. They went into overtime and Baltimore pulled it out. Did They went into overtime, right? It was the last second. Yeah, yeah they, went, they won an overtime. Yeah. They lost in overtime to Baltimore. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go Chargers here. They beat the Eagles last week. I still think they're a good team, even though they got, you know, crushed the other week. Uh, I forget against who, someone bad. Uh, well, they lost to New England, but I think the Chargers are going to pull this one out. Kevin does as well. Uh, Andy, who are you going with? Chargers. Taking the Chargers. I can't take the Vikings. I mean, that team is just – I think they need to make a coaching change. Mike Zimmer's, I think, on the hot seat right now, and this this might be his last year in Minnesota. All right, Steve. I'm going to go with the Chargers, and I agree with Jared. Uh, Minnesota has way too much talent to be just faltering week after week. They, 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 they find ways to lose games. And yep. they're three and five. They probably won't make the playoffs. Too much talent up there. You'll probably see a coaching change in January. I have to agree. Jared, who are you going with? Chargers, Vikings. Vikings gave that game away. The Vikings had every opportunity to win that game the other night and did not. And you could not trust that team. Got to go with the Chargers. No, you can't. All right. Carolina at Arizona. Uh, Kevin went Arizona. I'm going to go Arizona. Jared, who are you going with? I've been on the Arizona train all year. I think if, unless there's a wild, wild whatever game, I'm probably taking Arizona because I've been on the Arizona train since day one um, of this show. So um, I'm going Arizona. That team is good. Well, it's it a good football more, team. It certainly is. And they crushed San Francisco without Kyler Murray. What or, a, DeAndre, what a, or DeAndre Hopkins. That right. was a disgrace the 49ers showed. Uh, Kyle Shanahan needs to go. That That's just disgraceful. I'm sorry. You lost to Colt McCoy? Seriously? <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, that is just you didn't you didn't even have DeAndre Hopkins. That was a disgraceful loss. It really Arizona. Was. Arizona it's all the way. Especially the way they lost, because they didn't yeah. just lose. They got blown. They got, out. They got their this rear ha- ends. This has to be Arizona all around. I'd be shocked if any of us took care of it. All right. Well, here. Steve, who are you going with? I'm gonna go with Arizona. They look like the best team in football right, right now. And they could be unbeaten if they just got that one last. Right against the Packers. Is Kyler Murray playing or is he coming back? Or I think so. I don't think it's known yet. I think he'll be back though. Do you I really need back. do you really even need to play him this week, honestly? I mean No, because they totally destroyed the Niners. And and I agree yeah. with you. I, the people rant and rave about Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch. They're on pace to have their fourth last place finish in five years. Horrible, Steve. What is so he's, great about he's that? He's out of there. He's got to get out of there. They yeah. wanted Mac Jones. Like, that. this this whole yeah. thing. I mean. They traded up to, to get him, and yet they take Trey Lance. I, 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 the San Francisco team I look at, and I have no idea what they're doing. I have no idea. No, nobody does. I don't think no. they do either. No, I, I, I don't think so either, Tom. <laughs> uh, Horrible. 
Arizona Tampa NFC Championship. Calling it right now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mark it down. Dots called. All right. Philly at Denver. This should be an interesting matchup with the mediocre. Kevin is going Denver. Andy, who are you going with? Taking the Broncos. They they actually showed me a little bit last week. You got to give them credit. Putting up 30 on Dallas in Dallas. Impressive. And they got rid of Vaughn Miller because, you know, nobody would go to his birthday party and then now he's gone. And maybe this team's finally going to turn the corner a little bit. They're tough to beat at home. Denver's tough at home. They certainly are. Jared. Tom, who are you going with? <laughs> I'm going to go Denver. I'm going Philly. All right. I think Philly's going to Philly's gonna do some things here. I think Denver's going to come back down to earth a little bit. And uh, I want to try to get a game on you here. So I'm going Philly. Well, it would be big if Philly wins because Denver is tied with us right now, you know, and, and for the wild card. I almost want to go Philly now. Uh, Steve, who are you going with? I don't know what the Broncos. That's a very impressive win in Dallas. And, you know, they, they, they shut them out through what, the three quarters. Hmm. I'll so, tell you what, I'm not sold on the Denver offense, but I do believe. Yeah, I'm not sold defense. on their offense. Their, their, their defense has done fine. The, the, the question for them in most games will be, can the offense keep up? Yep. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that should be an interesting game. I could see that being one of those weird overtime games. Could be high scoring, too. You just never know. I mean, it's yeah. just. Yeah, you don't know what you're going to get in that one. That's for sure. Tom, we've had the same pick for every every game so far. And I think this is a game where I could go either way. So I'm going Philly. I think, I don't know, I'm fine with going Philly. If Philly hits the bed and loses 35 to nothing, so be it. But I think this is a really spicy game where Philly could win. Give extra it to me. Give it me. to me. Extra work for me. Seattle at Green Bay. Uh, this is an interesting one. I don't know. Is Rodgers going to play? Does anyone know? <laughs> He's playing. I haven't fantasy. He needs to play. Russell Wilson, I think, is back this week, right? Russell Wilson is back this week. Yep. But who knows how that finger is going to be? Um, ah, this is a tough one. This is tough, yeah. Kevin went Seattle. Andy, who are you going with? I'm taking Seattle as well. I, I think, um, I don't know. This is a weird spot for Green Bay uh, I mean, because we don't know if Rodgers is – he's probably gonna, most likely going to play, but uh, Seattle's a different team with Russell Wilson on the field, let's face it. We don't know how that finger is, but this te- both these teams have always had good matchups over the last few years, and I, I like Seattle. I think they're going to pull this one out. All right, Jared, and you're picking before me on this one. Who are you going with? Where is this game? Is this game in Seattle? It's in Green Bay. Oh, crap. Um, uh, it depends on if Rodgers plays. I don't know if Rodgers is going to play. If Rodgers plays, I might take Green Bay, but I think as of right now, I'm going to take Seattle. Right. I think, again, Andy said it. You know, I like Russell Wilson a lot. Him being back would be a huge boost to their team. He's a, a very talented quarterback, obviously. So Green Bay uh, looked horrible last week. Yeah. They can only score seven points against that just pitiful defense that the Chiefs have. I yeah, mean, no, I'm, I'm going Seattle here. Horrible. Green Bay's defense looked good, though. They held him to 13. Uh, Steve, who are you yeah. going with? I'm going to go with Green Bay. I think they'll rebound with Rodgers back. They didn't play well at all last week. Seahawks' defense isn't very good, though. Uh, I don't think they're going to have much success in slowing down Rodgers. All right. Uh, yeah, I think if Rodgers is back, definitely Green Bay. If he's not, Seattle. Uh, so, yeah, I'll let this I'll let this one be a contingency one. If, if Rodgers is back, whoever wants Green Bay with Rodgers gets him. If he's not – it's just Seattle across the board. How about that? All right. And we had, we had to uh, cancel out Green Bay and Kansas City last week because of the late news that uh, Rodgers wasn't playing. So I didn't include that in our picks. I'm trying to be fair here. Oh, I love that. Love that. All right. Moving on to Sunday night football. Speaking of the Chiefs, they're taking on the Raiders in a crucial AFC West matchup on Sunday night football. This could be a very interesting game. I'm going to go Raiders. Raiders. I have no faith in the Chiefs defense. I think they're the worst in the league. And uh, I don't have a lot of faith in their offense right now. They only put up 13 points last week against the Green Bay team with a backup quarterback. And Green Bay's defense is good, but they're not that good. So give me the Raiders 
Kevin went Raiders. Andy, who are you going with? I'm going to take the Chiefs because I think the Raiders are in a tailspin right now. I mean, it's been one thing after another with this team. They lose their head coach, then the Henry Ruggs disaster. Now they just released uh, one of their other top picks, uh, picks because he was uh, on social media making death threats with a gun. What the hell is wrong with this team? I mean, they're the Raiders. <laughs> they're, they're just, they're just a, it's a bunch of loose cannons. My goodness, no, this team is this team's on the way down. I think Kansas City is going to get it together this week, and they're going to pull it out. All right, what a disaster. You know what? I feel like though, whenever something happens to the Raiders, they overcome it and win somehow. They just assigned uh, Deshaun Jackson, didn't they? There you they go. Did. He's going to have like eight receptions this week. Jared, who are you going with? I'm going to take the Chiefs. Um, I think Andy hit the nail on the head. This is a Raiders team that's obviously got a lot of issues right now. Um, it's interesting because I took the Raiders the week after they fired Gruden and they won. Right. Um, so this is a weird spot where the Raiders could somehow pull off something crazy after the week they've, they've had, um, you know, and kind of what's happened recently. But um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think the Chiefs, like Andy said, get it together this week. Um and do some do some damage. All right, Steve. I'm gonna go with the Chiefs. The Raiders have some not so flattering losses. That they lost to Chicago and the Giants. And both of those offenses are nothing Brutal. to write home about. So you know, if you can't beat those two, I'm not sure why you think you could beat KC. Oh yeah, they lost to the Giants last week. That's right. Terrible. Yeah. The Raiders were awful last week. Yep. Yeah. Terrible. No, you know what? I'm changing my pick. No, Tom. No. Changing oh, it. No, Tom. They, I forgot they lost to the Giants. That settles it. I, I'm uh, going Kansas City. Sorry. Dang folks. you, Steve. Dang you. Got to do it. Yeah. They lost to the Giants. Sorry. And not just all these problems off the field, all that stuff. Oh, my God. It, it's just, never ending. It's something new every week there. And it's then a, long show. another factor is Kevin went with the Raiders. So now I kind of hope the Raiders <laughs> win. That's no, fair. I hope the Raiders win. <laughs> so do I, for Kevin's sake. He'll get a uh, game on all of us. The Raiders have got to no, be no, one no. of the most. I hope the, I hope the Raiders win, not only for Kevin's sake, because you changed your pick, Tom, from the Raiders to the Chiefs. I hope I, that comes I know. back. They, they probably will. I probably just jinx the Chiefs, which I'm fine with, because I can't stand them. Uh, my Monday night football, Rams at San Francisco. Oh, God. Is anyone going to go 49ers? No. No. Please. Not a chance. Please, no. This game isn't yes. even going to be – not yes. even going to be close. Guess what? Nine, Someone did go with the 40, zero. Someone did go with the 49ers. Kevin. Yep. He went with the 49ers. I wish he was here to explain that one, but he's going with the 49ers. Um, we need Kevin back on the show immediately. Yep. <laughs> I, I can't picture the Rams losing two in a row. I think they're no, going to be really – to that, to that train wreck? No way. I mean no. – you know, San Disaster. Francisco is really weird, though. I mean, they've gotten, like, a few good wins this year, but then they'll just come out against a bad team and look horrible. Here's the thing. Even if San Francisco comes out and goes up, like, 14 nothing, the Rams still have the talent to come back and win a game like that. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you, can't, you can't be safe if you're San Francisco up 14 nothing, 17 nothing, whatever. I mean, yep. the way Cooper Cup is playing, uh, the way that defense can step up, um, yeah, Rams all the way. I have to agree. I think it's going to be the Rams. Watching a 49ers press conference, too, is so embarrassing. Like, I, I actually did watch their press conference after last week's game against the Cardinals. What an embarrassment, really. I mean, like, disaster. It's a disaster. Like, I, I've never seen anything like this, really. George, George Kittle is the only player on that team that's like. And Debo playing, Samuel, play, you know. Oh, oh, and Debo Samuel. Yeah. But, wow. I mean, it's just inexcusable, really. I mean. Well, you'd have to imagine Kittle wants out at some point soon with that disaster. Yeah. All right. So we got a couple minutes left. Uh, guys, any final thoughts? High school football. Um, again, I mean, you, you look at Division Two. Division Two again, is is just continuing to be spicy. Um, again, I think Milford Natick is going to be a great game this week. Um, you know, if it lives anything up to, to the first meeting. Um, you're going to have LS against Marshfield this week, LS at Marshfield, which sounds kind of insane because LS, I think was vastly underseated as a five, um, you know, traveling to Marshfield, that should be a really good game. And then if LS wins that game, that probably sets up a meeting with Catholic Memorial in the semifinals, which would be an uh, elite game. Probably, um, obviously no, everybody knows CM is 
probably head and shoulders above the rest. But, um, you know, LS can probably give them a game, definitely. Um, but, yeah, some good matchups in the docket this week and uh, definitely looking forward to it. Absolutely. Andy, any final thoughts? Yeah, if you can look behind me here, I have a, I have a Celtics banner up here. I'm going to tell you something right now. I have had it with this basketball team. It is time to just completely start from scratch. Okay. Abandon ship. I'm I am abandoning ship. I'm done. I don't know how you can bring a a former coach a, a coach and promote him to GM, and now he's talking about getting a trade for Ben Simmons. Smart is a disaster. This team is a disaster. I've had it. I've had enough. I am done. I am not interested in this basketball team. I do like Adoka. I think he's at least calling out players in the team. But my goodness, this team is insufferable to watch. I, I have had it. And this is not just a Celtics problem. This is a league problem. This, this, The players have way too much control in this league. It's time for these owners to start stepping up and saying, you need to start you know, obeying the rules, playing for your contracts. But I have had it with the Celtics team. I have no idea how they could promote Brad Stevens on this team. It's just, it's I, can't, I don't understand it. That's okay. a heck of a rant. Got to love it. Love yeah. I've, I've, I've had it. I've had enough. I'm Put done. it in the Hall of Fame. Put it in the Hall of Fame. Steve, you got the right idea. Steve, show that jacket. Steve, show that jacket, Steve. Nice. Yeah. Love that. Love that. Steve, any final thoughts? Uh, looking forward to another football-filled weekend. And it all starts Thursday night. Uh, Mofanita got moved up one night. Apparently, it's going to be a little wet on Friday, from what I hear. So, yeah, yes. forget Baltimore, Miami. Good. We already um, know who's going to win that game. Milford Natick is uh, where it's at. Last last yeah, thought I said, I mentioned this on the show a couple of weeks ago, but again, uh, still very concerned about um, a lot of big name athletes around the different sports testing positive for COVID. Um, Sidney Crosby recently from the Penguins, uh, Joel Embiid from the Sixers, um, you know, Nick Chubb and, and some of these Broncos players, or, I mean, Browns players, uh, very concerning. Um yeah, not not a fan of that at all. No. Yeah, and real quickly, you know, uh, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but there already have been some leagues. Um, I don't think any in this area, but there've already been some leagues that have been talking. They are still not going to be allowing spectators into the winter season. So this is a this is something we're going to have to stay tuned to because, as Jared just alluded, that, you know, I'm hoping they will, but some leagues have already said no spectators again for this winter. Yep, it should be interesting, and um, hopefully it won't be anything around here, but, you know, I think especially with hockey arenas uh, could get really interesting because you usually at a complex like the New England Sports Center, for example, you have a lot of games going on. So yeah, I could definitely, if things really take off and we get an uptick in cases, I could definitely picture uh, fans being limited. But we are out of time, so a big thank you to uh, Steve Watson, Jared Keen, and Andy Barron for joining us on the show today. For everyone at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. Take care, be well, we'll catch you next week on HCAM Sports Talk.